Hello, boys and girls. I am back, and on today's episode of Party Time Excellent, I have the one and only Derek from Sepultura. Enjoy. Party time, excellent. <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. Look who I have here, Derek. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure oh to God. be here. We are in the same time zone. I think it is like probably my second person that I speak with that I have the same time zone with. <laughs> <laughs> I always speak with people like on different part of the planet, and it's like sixteen hours apart or ten hours apart, and it's it's a very frustrating because it's night in one part of the planet daytime in the other part of the planet you know but we making it work so thank you so much well before i start this i want to say i've been following your social media for the past year uh, a lot and uh -oh. you are very <laughs> fun to you are very fun to follow <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how much we have in common. Uh, believe it or not, we have a lot in common. So we are going to talk a lot about this. Uh, also, feel free to speak whatever, um, whatever comes to your mind, because this is not an interview. This is just friendly conversation uh, that I think people are missing nowadays a lot. So, um, yeah, let's start. I, I try to start this um episodes on my YouTube channel with a specific question. You see this um, season is called Party Time Excellent. Uh, mm -hmm. And I often wonder what is party time mean for people? Because it's such different things, you know? What does party time mean for you? When it's par parties on, you know, what does it mean? I mean, for me, what a good party, what brings a good party to to the best party that could possibly be is good music, I feel. So okay. anytime there's great music, um, a good playlist, a good DJ, somebody that knows knowledgeable about doing. music, that helps yes. a lot. Um, <laughs> a person that can get you into the mood, that helps mm -hmm. a lot. So being around great people, I like to be around positive people. That's always a party time for me, being around very mm -hmm. positive people, outgoing people. Um, getting away from any of the negative vibe, you know, that is a, okay. a great party time for me. I think great. that's one of the best answers I ever had. Thank you. Really? I, wow. I, really I'm still going on. Normally, <laughs> you know, I don't know, you know, metalheads, they're all, you know, I like to party, have drinks, stay up all night and stuff like that. Ooh, I mean, that's... we do that too, but the, the positivity of people that surround us and the energy of the place where we are, the people where we spend the time with is definitely most important. So I totally agree. Yeah, I, totally I mean, I can, I can add on to the party time as well. I mean, great conversation, good food. It yes. can actually make a fantastic party. So Definitely. There's nothing better than a happy belly, right? <laughs> right, exactly. You know, you, you satisfy your gut, treat it right, and, yeah. uh, you know, it leads to happiness. Absolutely, absolutely. I think everybody that is watching this is going to be like, yep, let me go grab some food <laughs> right now. <laughs> Talking about food, that leads me to this one very big thing we have in common. Yes. Uh, I, I cannot not talk about this. And it's funny because normally I'm not really pushing very much my vegan lifestyle and I'm not really like all like uh, protesting against like certain people that don't eat the same way. However, uh, yeah, it's fun <laughs> to watch you um, find so much good food, discover amazing places and just promoting the restaurants and the good cuisine. How long have you been doing this for? Well, I've been really like pushing as far as promoting and showing different things online. Uh, not for a super long time. I, I want to say maybe three or four years. Mm -hmm. But um, I've been plant-based. Um, I haven't eaten any meat or any animals uh, for over 30 years. Um, That's incredible. I don't use any... Look, look how 
animal Look products. Look how cute he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, thank you. Gosh. There you are. But uh, it's Let's not only what I eat, eat, though. I mean, there's there's a lot of, of goes into to feeling good and, and treating yourself well, you know, uh, being physical as far as uh, staying physical, as far as being fit, um, yeah. exercising, um, getting enough sleep. Absolutely. Low stress. You know, it's a combination of many yeah. things that really can lead to feeling healthy. So Absolutely. I, I started at a really young age of questioning a lot of things around me at the age of 15, I, I stopped eating meat. Um, I just wanted to really see if it would make a difference uh, physically, you know? I wasn't really mm -hmm. thinking about the repercussions that it has on the planet. Um, yeah. I, I did love animals, I still love animals, so that was one of the reasons as well. But I didn't really have an understanding at that age of what they were actually doing to the animals and how it was really yes. affecting the planet and how it was affecting uh, my body as well. But I started to learn about it as I went through those phases. It was something that I found out for myself that I went mm -hmm. after. And so I really Absolutely. don't like to push the idea of being plant-based on a lot of people. I just like to live by example. Yes. And, 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 and that's what the idea came about of doing a program called Highway to Health, because it's a highway that I feel that we're all on and yeah. it's certain, you know, it, it's not only about food, you know, staying no. healthy, you know, it's it's also exploring a healthy planet, healthy body, you know, and how we're all connected through this. Absolutely. You, you said it perfectly. I can totally agree with this. Unfortunately, I didn't start as uh, as young as you were. Um, it's been a little bit over five years for me since I changed completely my diet to a plant plant based uh, diet. And I always loved animals as well myself. But I come from a very poor country and an extremely poor family. And what country is that? I was I was curious yes. to ask. So I was born. Um, in Moldova, which is a very small country between Romania and Ukraine. I've However, been there. my you've been there. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, my parents are not really from there, so I have a very mixed ethnicity. Um, Where so are your parents from? My my father is from Armenia, and my Armenia. mother is half Greek, half Polish. Excellent. And I, I did live in Armenia um, when I was a kid, also in pretty poor conditions. So any type of food was actually a luxury. So it never occurred to me that you can even like choose food at all. You know, right. I was never a picky eater. And however, I growing up and starting you know, making my own money, my own income, I I could say that I could definitely see the difference between certain meals and I was always eating more organic, uh, more stuff from farmer's market and all. But for me also, it came like an, um, it was like an experiment to see how I'm going to feel like because I'm a pretty right. uh, active person and I love sports a lot too since I was a kid. I go to the gym every day now as well because they are open here, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. Um, yeah, that's right. So, You're in Vegas. Yeah, I'm in Vegas yeah, yeah. now. That is true. We are not too far from each other. Um, and yes, for me, it's totally the same. When people ask me either about why don't I promote it more or why don't I talk about it more, is the question is very simple. I will gladly talk about it if you ask, but I'm never going to push that. That's It's like a religion. It's very, you're not going to ever want to try something that is pushed on you right. so it's a discovery that everybody has to do by themselves i i love uh the planet and the nature and i'm very passionate about when it comes to uh recycling and reusing and all that all, all sorts of s stuff like that and if possible you know cleaning your own body and mind not just eating healthy but also right. sometimes having breaks fasting or stuff like that you know mm -hmm. and it's it's a big taboo even nowadays believe it or not so i'm very glad we are talking about this right now because you look incredible and a lot of people ask me the first question is 
how do you get keep up protein. with the energy or that <laughs> yeah how right. do you you know get your protein how do you keep up with your energy to go to you know be to be so active um you know let's be honest just being on stage is insanely active just yes. that alone and yeah people are very amazed they they think we we definitely take a bunch of other stuff <laughs> <laughs> So what is your secret for looking immortal like you do? <laughs> oh, God. I think a big part has to do with genetics. <laughs> I mean, okay. I, I, I got lucky with that. Uh, my brother and sister don't look their age as well. Awesome. Um, but again, it's really lifestyle. You know, how you treat yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the main reason why I wanted to, to try to change uh, what was put in front of me. I never questioned anything that was put in front of me. Yeah. And at the age of 15, 16, I really wanted to, I was very rebellious, you know. I, was, yeah, I, was, I wanted to know why certain people were doing certain things and, you know, why were we taught this and that. And I just didn't accept everything that was just put in front of me. So it was really that big question of everything around me. And, um, and, and I believe it really is a, a lot of different things, you know, it, genetics, um, stress, those things, um, and how you, your lifestyle. I, I haven't, I stopped drinking about a year ago, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't because I was, uh, something happened or anything. It just one day I just Another felt choice, that yeah. it really wasn't doing anything for me. Mm -hmm. It's like I couldn't find the enjoyment that I had from it before. And yeah. the more that I was drinking, as the older I got, the worse I felt. It wasn't getting better in anything. Yeah, when I was yeah. younger and drinking was fine. I could drink a lot and have fun and, and go all, crazy. We, we all could, yeah. But I wasn't I really knowledgeable of what it was doing to my body. And, and now that I'm uh, a little bit older, uh, I could really feel it. Um, just mm -hmm. drinking even a little bit. And so the benefits just, there were no more benefits for, for me. So I just stopped. Um, yeah. And I felt a hundred times better since I have stopped. Yeah. Well, that's so that amazing helps. too. That's another, another very strong willed, um, thing to do. You know, uh, I never really, I never did any type of drugs or anything. And it's always, um, a cliche that people think that, you know, people that have this chaotic lifestyle of a musician and they get things for free or whatever they well, do they, it all. they do they, those are truths <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's the some crazy time, musicians getting yeah, free stuff <laughs> i mean don't get me wrong you know i know for sure that because of certain drugs however dramatic that sounds we have certain music and we have certain albums that exist nowadays you know from from like the older uh bands but still, still, it, I feel like the knowledge was not out there. And nowadays, there's so much to learn. And it's the information is around you for free. All you have to do is open your mind and like let that information sink in and or or try it for a little bit. You know, uh, I, I'm not a huge drinker either. Uh, however, I do. I do sometimes uh, like drink wine or I used to live in Italy so my whole family lives in Italy right again I I might confuse you here a little because my no whole family, no not at all I, I get it <laughs> <laughs> yeah my whole family moved to Italy and they just know the the you know the quality of food the quality of wine quality of coffee <laughs> oh yeah these are so, all wonderful things Absolutely. And I, I definitely got a little bit spoiled with that. So I don't mind here and there uh, having a glass of wine. But I also feel like it's not really mine. It's not right. really what makes me feel all that good, especially in the morning. You feel very right. much like after one or two um glasses of wine it feels like you partied all in night long <laughs> absolutely how is that happening am i getting old what's happening <laughs> i don't know anyways that's so so great but i want to come back to a key um um to a key word that you said a little bit before stress now yes. that is something that we have to learn how yeah. to protect ourselves from because 
people are so different and in a way we allow ourselves to get stressed for small things or for bigger things, sometimes subconsciously, not mm-hmm. on purpose. So how do we avoid that? Teach me. <laughs> well, one thing I definitely learned from this lockdown is try to not stress out over things that you can't control. Okay. So with the whole pandemic kicking in, it was completely out of our hands. There's Definitely. nothing I could do about it. So I wasn't going to tour on an album that we just put out. Yeah. Unfortunately, we weren't going to do, you know, I wasn't going to be able to to earn any money, to work, to do anything. And then yeah. it was really out of my control. And so to stress over that of could have brought me into a deep depression. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to do was do things that made me feel good, like how to treat myself well in these horrible times um, where there's a lot of negative things are happening around me. So there were simple things that I wanted to to do um, that didn't cost any money um, and it wasn't hurting anyone else. Um, and it just really was something that was uplifting. So I started doing these walks okay. um, each day for at least an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, and now they've expanded to almost two hours, but then creating a playlist of favorite songs I or songs I haven't heard or things I haven't heard from certain artists, things I've been dying to hear yeah. and things that I love hearing that put me into a good mood or bring me back to a certain time period. So creating a massive playlist and then going out, giving my that time of the day for myself, you know, an hour, that's, you know, an hour of no phone, no internet, Amazing. you know, no speaking with anyone, just inside my own head and letting those thoughts flow and just walking outside with nature um, around my block. I mean, anywhere that I could, I would give myself that time. Um, And it really helped clear my head, especially in the morning to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Like just making my bed every day, not just leaving it a mess, you know, just doing these like little routine things that really just help you get through the day. And I, I, they help me at least, you know, to, and there's something very, um, positive in a way. So that clearing of the mind and taking all that stress away was great. You know, each day having that time for yourself. That's, that's very, very awesome. And I'm happy that you found that for yourself. I can, uh, totally say that I created some sort of a routine or pattern as well um, thanks to this lockdown and I won't be lying and just (laughs) saying that that didn't affect me absolutely it affected me I'm a very emotional person and sometimes that works in my benefit you know, through my music or when I'm on the stage or when I want to express myself, I, I know exactly what I feel and, and I, des, des, I describe how I feel perfectly because I'm not trying to ever bottle things in, you know, like, but however, being so emotional also works against me very often because I take things closer to my heart and I tend to like give bigger meanings to things. So that's why I also had to um, like, okay, so I like working out. I'm not just going to work out a couple of days a week. I will work out every day instead. Or, you know, like I will not be lazy and I will actually cook my food every day because (laughs) I live alone and uh, I love cooking very much. But when it comes to myself, it's like, it's like we fail sometimes to give ourselves that attention and that love. Oh, absolutely. And, and so I'm like, okay, I'm going to cook, you know, for myself to enjoy the meal that I'm having or, you know, taking baths instead of showers or whatever, you know, little things like that. So I, I too can can agree with that. And especially when it comes to music, it's it's so relieving how certain certain music can lift you up or help you like deal with certain um, thoughts even that don't leave your brain alone, you know? Right. So uh, that's amazing. No, Talking it's true. That, I mean, cooking yeah. is, I mean, cooking and working out were the next things I was going to say that yeah. absolutely help in stress relief. Um, it's, it's like a it's, therapy it's, for sure. No, I have, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. I always loved cooking. It's just, it makes me a little bit happier when I have 
um, you know, friends over or like yeah, a family or somebody you to cook, cook for, for someone else. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like a different level of cooking. When you cook for yourself, you're like more sloppy. <laughs> 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 I don't know, but yeah, you know, keeping your house clean and not neglect certain things. It helped me a lot. I actually have a dog. Do you have pets? No, I do not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it helped me a lot. Honestly, I was very, very lucky to have a dog while well, this happened because she also gave me purpose to like you know walk her and you know pat her cuddle with her watch a movie like with a living a living creature you know what i mean it's a little bit oh, totally yeah, different animals yeah. are incredible for therapy and, and yeah and, and companionship yeah for sure for sure that's incredible but um Talking about music, I want to say thank you so, so much for the album. Uh, oh, your wow. album thank that you. you released in 2020 is just incredible. And I listen to it a lot, and um, especially in the gym, because it's the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, Quadra, can you tell us a little bit more about it? I'm so, so curious. How does it work when... When, I mean, how does it work for the bands that actually released in 2020? Mm -hmm. Well, we had worked so much to th in 2019 on the album. So we didn't mm -hmm. do a lot of the festivals in 2019 because we were planning on playing those festivals in 2020. Mm -hmm. So with the, in 2019, we took a lot of time in the writing process to prepare ourselves before going in the studio. Um, and we took long, a longer time on this album than other albums um, as far as uh, the writing process. And I think that helped into creating okay. a, 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 an incredible album, I feel. Um, taking yeah. that time and having the time to do that album and, and go in the studio very prepared and working with the producer that we had already worked with before, Jens mm -hmm. Bogren, um, in Sweden. And so he worked, we worked with him on our last album, Machine Messiah. Um, and so we knew what we were going into. And that helps a yeah. lot, having being Absolutely. very comfortable. You know, Absolutely. so you're like, oh, yeah, we're going to yeah. go back here. We're going to go to the studio yeah. and we're going to kill it, you know. So, Absolutely. And we're very confident with the, 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 with ourselves, within ourselves as a group, because this was our third album with Aloy Casagrange our drummer that's been with yeah. us for quite some time now. So this great, was also another drummer, yeah. level of stepping up and having that confidence, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, it was so exciting to really work on the album and to to write it um, and come up with, you know, a lot of the ideas of the lyrics and the concept of each person living in their own quadra, like you grew up in your own area and you learned yeah. certain things from living within that area. But you have to give respect to that because you're not, you know, not everyone is born in the Absolutely. same quadras, you know, the same mm -hmm. square. And yeah. so uh, that's a learning process we, we, we developed from traveling and meeting people mm -hmm. from all around the world. And Definitely. not to pass those super quick judgments of like, oh, how come they're not like me and thinking oh, yeah. this way? <laughs> and how come, you know, it's like this person is living in a completely different part of the planet Absolutely. Completely learning level. How they learn is different from you. There's some definite things that you have in common, but don't assume that someone's going to be, you know, exactly coming from the same place that you are. So yeah. that takes that's a, that's a, something that people have to learn a lot of times because I realize that uh, we're very fortunate as musicians to be able to travel mm -hmm. and to meet different people um, and from talking to people who aren't artists or who aren't musicians traveling a lot. Um, you really, you can start to realize that, you know, when, yeah. you, when you're in certain conversations and let's say we're talking about a Moldavia or, yeah. or, or somewhere and, and then that person's like, I have no idea where yeah. that is, <laughs> yeah, anything yeah, about sure. <laughs> it, like what's surrounding it, is yeah. it in Europe, uh, you know, it's just, yeah. I mean, for me, a lot of things flash in my head, it's like the flag, you know, I know it's like blue, yellow and red and there's like, mm -hmm. you know, like this weird skull type thing on the front of it. Yeah. But I'm a weird freak when it comes yeah. to flags. But uh, And I also had a chance to go there. So it's it's really, and I know the capital, and things like that. So like little things. And um, it just felt so fortunate to have that ability to travel and to realize that. And so a lot of that traveling goes into our writing mm -hmm. and to creating an album and 100%. coming up with certain 100%. topics of, from talking to people, not just 
you know, seeing things online, which is incredible because you can, there's so much knowledge there, but oh, yeah. still that feeling of face-to-face -face conversation is something that can never be erased. It's something that's so vital to an artist, I think for people in general, um, but yeah. especially in our line of work, having that contact, you know, playing a show, having the crowd there, the reaction, you know, mm -hmm. speaking with people, you know, so that Absolutely. goes into the writing process. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Uh, I couldn't, I, I wouldn't be able to, to say it better. Um, what was the, the, the reaction of people, though? Mm. Like, you know, because everybody was in, in this big lockdown and depression. Mm. The whole year was very challenging. I feel like it still is, but we kind of learned to go with the flow already, in a way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but how was it to really like being a, such an established band and give to people an album in such difficult year? Mm. Well, it was really frustrating because as you know, uh, as a musician, it's so important to play live. Absolutely. And, and, and so putting out a new album, I didn't have that reaction, that chance to, to feel the reaction from a crowd from playing a live show. So it was really frustrating in that way because I'm so used to like, okay, we do an album, we play, we can see the reaction, you know, for ourselves. But this was hearing reactions from people online and writing and they were all positive. So it made me very excited about playing live um, even more, you know, it's like, oh my God, I really want to go on tour yeah, because the reaction yeah, has been uh, extremely positive. Um, and it was great to hear, you know, it was definitely the best reactions that I've had from doing an album since I've been in the band. So, wow, wow. Amazing. I mean, I can Amazing. say that hands down. And, um, and so it was really encouraging to hear the feedback from a lot of people because they had time to really listen to it yes. being in that lockdown. That's, that's go, also a good point, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a very good point. Well, my favorite song is Last Time from yes. this album. I really love it very much. It's so raw and to the point. I really love it. I needed to tell you that. Oh, um, thank you. Yes, it's, it's really great. Well, I was curious to ask you this because we are in a very interesting position as a band because we released our fourth album in 2019. And right after we released it, we went on tour with it once right away for autumn. And that was it. And mm -hmm. now that album was very crucial for our career uh, because it was the first album that we released with a label. We've been independent for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And we worked hard and being independent and coming from such a small country is so heavy. Um, where do you call you, what country do you call home? Well, it's, it's a very difficult question. I think I call <laughs> home the place where I'm loved, if that makes sense, because I am a sucker for love. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have relatives in Moldova anymore. Uh, it's only my band there, and that's where we created the band. But I lived, this is America's country number four that I moved to. So my whole family lives in Italy, and I love going to Italy. I lived in Italy myself for almost five years. Did you Which university part of there? Italy? Uh, La Roma. <laughs> La Roma. La Roma. La I, I lived in Rome, and I studied... Um, languages in the university in Rome. My whole family, though, lives in a city next to Venice. Okay. Yeah, so northern wow. part. What, yes. Yeah, so they live how many, there for, How many languages do you speak now? Uh, I speak four languages pretty much at the same level. Um, wow. And I do and what are understand. those? English, of course. Italian. English, Italian, Russian, and Romanian. Ah, oh, wow. So Russian and Romanian are both languages that I learned growing up. Uh, Moldova um, speaks Romanian yeah, and a, a, a slight a slight dialect of Romanian, but it's still it's still very very much Romanian. It, it doesn't have a different name or anything. Uh, but because we used to be part of USSR, USSR right. a lot of people speak Russian. And my dad 
being from also a country that used to be part of USSR, he only knew Russian to speak with my mother. So I grew up in a mm. Russian speaking family, but I went to school and like with friends, I spoke more Romanian. So it was it just both languages kind of grew with me. Um, mm. In a band, we mostly speak Russian because my boys also have parents from either Ukraine or Russia. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I did languages though, so I I do understand a little bit Spanish. Um, I only did it for a little bit, unfortunately. See, si. si. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no. You are now in the that. Estados Unidos. There you, you need go. To there speak you go. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Un poquito. Spanish. Spanish. That's good. Yeah. I'm sure you would be fine. I mean, it, it sounds like I mean you're already speaking four languages. That's incredible. I know Thank Romanian you. is a, it's a, there's a Latin in it. Yes. So Both. that's something so, that's very so, interesting. Correct. So Romanian and Italian, they have Latin, Latin roots. Uh, roots, just like Spanish and French. Si. French and Portuguese and, like, and Portuguese. French. Portuguese. Yes. And uh, yeah, so um, that's why it's a little bit easier to learn a, a Latin language for sure. Especially um, Italian, I think you would be great at speaking Portuguese. Pro I, I, I mean, I lived, I lived in Brazil for 20 years mm -hmm. and I learned to speak Portuguese, yeah. more or less, but it has a strong Italian background. It a does, lot of, it does. And so it's, I, I'm By almost certain some, that you would be able to pick it up. The, by watching some like... TV shows growing up uh, with subtitles. I definitely remember Mi Corazon. <laughs> yeah, Mi Corazon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. Languages is something I'm very passionate about. I like reading and What learning. do you dream in? What language do you dream in? I think it variates from where I'm at. So when I travel and I stay a couple of days or a week, uh, my brain kind of switches. And I definitely, I definitely feel more confident in English because I write in English, I read in English. Mm. And English has been a language that just has been with me for so long. Um, but when I go to Moldova, in a week or two, everything switches to Russian or Romanian. Uh, when I go to Italy, is the same thing. So it's like there are switches. A lot of people ask me, like, what is the language I think about? And uh, it's more <laughs> difficult to answer. Yeah, yeah so it's, I it's, get it. Yeah, it all depends on where, where I'm at. But anyways, going back to the albums, now we also worked on a newer album because we were all doing nothing, right? And I will be honest with you, um, because Endorphin, our previous album, was the first one uh, released under a label. Now we have to be, all together as a team, we have to be very smart with when we release our next album together, right? right. So be between all of us that are watching, our album was is ready for so long now, so long, and the, the, uh, and we have music videos with it and artwork and oh, all, wow. and we have to wait until next year. Now we yeah. have to wait longer, and I do understand the perspective of record label and the management, and you know those are all people that think business, yes, but at the same time they want to present you in your best form, in your best in the best way possible. And because this is such unpredictable times, I'm jealous that you release, that some bands could release something in 2020 or in 2021. But at the same time, I, I am like, I feel very emotional towards those bands because I'm, I'm worried about those bands, you know, like, mm. how did those albums do? Like, mm, I know I, I bought see. your album, you know, I know I supported you, but how many people were able to actually buy the album, even if we are talking about digital or, or right. support, you know, was it at the same level as before or was it not, you know? It, it's, you know, that's a good question. It, I think a lot of it will be answered once we start playing shows again. But I mean, I can only go on the response of the feedback that the I'm feedback. getting online and from maybe the label. 
their their feedback of sales, uh, mechanical yeah. sales and things like mm -hmm. that. But um, it's really the one thing that really kept us connected because we had this fear of losing this touch of our, our fan base because yeah. of the lockdown. So once the album was released, we immediately started these um, sessions online called uh, Sepul Quatra, mm -hmm. which is uh, Sepul Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And so every Wednesday we would get online and we decided that we were going to play for our fans, each of us in our own house. Mm -hmm. um, and we would do a jam with our, you know, Sepul Tour song uh, each Wednesday. And we would do a conversation with friends that we have different artists or different people. And so we kept doing this during the whole lockdown um, every Wednesday. And then we started having other musicians come and play our songs with us, you know? So we nice. invite a special guest and doing one of our songs. Um, and we collected a lot of those um, recordings and everything and decided to put that on an album. Yeah. And then we're going to release that album and it'll be, you know, something very special um, done uh, because of the times that we're in. Mm -hmm. And so that really helps staying connected with fans. You know, we got to hear the feedback from the album, from people who are doing the comments and, and writing about how important it was that we stay connected with them by having yeah. those simple Wednesdays, you know, it was really cool to have that connection. So that was something that we needed to do for ourselves yes. in yes. order to, to keep that going. Beautiful. Okay. Yes, that's that's awesome. That definitely definitely explains, you know, the connection um, with 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 the the fan base. You know, it's mm -hmm. very important. That's that's definitely what I keep talking about over and over again with my band, with the management. Uh, it's a little bit more tricky because I am so far from the band, um, yes. <laughs> and I travel to do everything uh, connected to my band, which is not a problem because I am a citizen of Moldova as well. So. They cannot deny me traveling, <laughs> technically. Mm, uh -huh. uh, so, um, yeah, I mean... Moldova passport? Amazing. Moldovian passport. Talking about wow. that, would you please <laughs> tell us how come uh, uh, you've been to Moldova, to the capital, to Chisinau? What did you do there? That's exactly where uh, I was uh, born. Wow, wow. Yes. We had a, a show. It was super insane. Yeah. Um, do you remember the year? Oh, my God. I do not remember no. the year. But there was somebody that jumped or was bleeding ridiculously. A fan that did something. I remember it was something crazy. I'd have to ask the guys in my band. But I just yes. remember it was just, like, shocking. I was like, oh, my God. This is <laughs> the most insane show. Yes, um, and awesome. I don't. I'm not sure if it was even in the capital. I think it was somewhere like outside, and uh, it was it was such an experience because it was just like in and out. You know, we yeah, played. Yeah, and it's such but, a small place. So it yeah, doesn't yeah. take <laughs> doesn't take but, much. So, but I mean, I was just. Yeah. I mean, for us, we love to play those places that a lot of bands don't have the opportunity to play, and we mm -hmm. get those offers where it's sometimes doable and sometimes not. And we've been waiting to play a lot of places and hopefully we'll be able to go back. I mean, it was that way with Georgia. A lot yeah. of times people are, you know, trying to get us to play there. And it's like, we really want to play, but just yeah. waiting for the right, you know, opportunity, opportunity and to everything. To be territorially closer, yeah. And then it happened. And when it did happen, I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy that we came I here. Know. I can't wait I to come so back. I am so curious when that was because uh, as a band, we started around 2008. And okay. two could years have been after, that. I want to say, <laughs> what? It could have been around then. I, yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. hard to. Two, so two years after that, actually, we had a um, club it was a, a club festival a small little festival but in, in indoors for the end of the year like for christmas celebrations and stuff and so many bands there's a lot of like jamming together playing together and i i i, I played with my band and then i played with an, uh, like a couple of songs with another band and believe it or not for the very first time uh, and i think the only time we actually did a cover for your band. Wow, what yeah. song? Yeah, Territory. Oh, so, I... yes. So, okay. Now, that 
hopefully will be found there is a footage of that and will oh, wow. be hopefully added to this video fingers crossed because i think we know where it is <laughs> that would be cool that would be great I, I used to have um, my black dreads at the time. It was just at the beginning of the of my band, and it was very brave for me to do any type of covers because I never sang in other bands. This is my first band, and I get it. <laughs> I just always gave it all. You know what I mean? It was always like all or nothing, all in. Right. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully we can find that and put it in. So maybe you can uh, tell me what you think about. <laughs> I will give you my honest opinion. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> that would be so, so awesome. But yeah, man, that's so great that you were able to play in Moldova. Not many bands are able to play in that country and other countries as small. Um, yeah. I mean, main uh, reason, yeah. I mean, last or 2019, I mean, I think it was 2019 or 2018. I, I'm horrible with date or years and dates, but. I mean, there was one year, I think it was 2019, we were able to play a lot of places we'd never played before. So Kazakhstan, you yes. know, and, uh, and Mongolia, you know, oh, it's just like, yes. I mean, we're doing a lot of like nice. ex-USSR type I like places. That. So, Well, you know what? I have to be honest with you. I mean, people love, love, love your band over there. I know for sure... I know for sure, even growing up um, and just being introduced to alternative music by my friends. I mean, I kind of, I did the transition by myself in the beginning when I was like 13. But then later around 15, 16, 17 years old is when I was seriously absorbing all the music that my friends were giving to me. And I started like going to like local band shows and stuff like that. And when I started um, working, uh, I started working at a very young age. With my very first salary, I decided that I'm going to buy some records. Uh, actually, cassettes at the time. <laughs> so uh, I went to the store. Uh, there was like a more alternative um, type of a store, super small, little one room, a couple of T-shirts, a couple of albums. So I bought two albums without really knowing what I'm buying. Right. So it was just my uh, let's say that the, those first years of initiation into like a more brutal sounding bands and like more not just alternative sounding bands, but like, you know, something heavier. So I was like, you know what, like, I'll just choose by the album cover, I guess, because I didn't yeah, know what I'm doing. Yeah, that's how I did it. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. And b believe it or not, your band was one of the bands I chose. I chose Roots by Sepultura and Iowa by Slipknot. So oh, that's I, great. Yeah, and that's how I fall in love with Sepultura. And, you know, I've seen you guys a couple of times uh, and I've seen, um, you know, um, so many bands after that. Actually, to, to um, talking about that, I actually saw you personally playing a couple of songs live at Dime Bash uh, 2020. Oh. So basically before the lockdown. Yeah, right before the yeah. lockdown. Yeah. Yes. So I was there with a couple of other musician friends because uh, I was visiting Nam, and oh, uh, right. yeah. So so I I saw uh, you perform. That's that was cool. Great. Yeah. Yeah, that was such a party. We filmed that for Highway to Health too, my program. Yeah. So that was really such awesome. a good party. Mm -hmm. It was. It was. So and that yeah, was my first time bag uh, bash that I attended. So that was really? my first for me. Yeah. Nice. How did how did that feel? It was great. I mean, especially because I live in LA now, and so mm -hmm. it was all really fresh and new. And it was great seeing a lot of old friends and mm -hmm. people I'd never met before. I mean, it was great. You know, I, I I loved it. Yeah, for sure. You know, I never, I never. It's really funny because I never really got to do uh, either Nam or other. Um, shows like that I, I i like going to shows but it happens so rare because normally we are on tour seven months a year or more you know and yeah, uh, just just being able to go to a show 
especially considering that after that almost right away lockdown happened i'm so happy i was there yeah. so yeah definitely well thank you so much this was just such a great great time thank you derek really i won't keep you too long however i want to end this video by asking you the classical two questions that i like to end um with uh every time and they are very easy questions actually All it's right, just <laughs> yes uh, you ready i'm ready <laughs> all right so can you please share us uh, share with us what is that one question that you're super tired answering like you know when interviewers or people in general ask you just there's always that one question that you're like again really <laughs> <laughs> god well there's a list of them okay, so it's not only couple. this one right, but right. Uh, the main one that comes to mind um Oh, uh, God. It would probably have to be reunion question. I'm like, why are you asking me about a reunion? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't in the band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, you're going to have to ask somebody. Me? Yeah. It's like, what about a reunion? And it's like, okay, that's not a question for me, but I, I hear that um, off and on. Okay. Still, okay. believe it Still, or not. Still, really? After all these years? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. All right. Any any other questions that are popping um, to your mind? Yeah. Uh, how did you join the band? But I guess, I mean, I figured that if somebody was going to do an interview, then ask me that question, they would probably look that up online. But again, yeah. I, you know, I've asked, I've answered it so many times. I think for me, it's, of course, in my head, I'm like, God, I said this a million times. It just sounds boring to me. Yeah. But then I have to think about people who have, Again, never heard Even of me, the band. never yeah. heard of the band, never, don't know anything about me. So yeah. there's always those people, even though I, it's a tiring question. It um, is. I can only imagine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. We all um, get a lot of boring, same, same questions. Sometimes, honestly, I do feel I know like... I, I, I know the question that you get. Oh, those tattoos shit, hurt. Shit, shit, shit. Those, did those hurt? Oh, uh, what? <laughs> those tattoos hurt? Oh, yeah, yeah, that a lot. Then I get the question, how is it to be a woman in a metal band? Oh, my God. Uh, that's like, <laughs> oh. And then I get the question, what does the band's name mean? You know, stuff like that when you're like, oh, my God. Can you be a little <laughs> bit more, like, prepared, please? Because it's it's boring for the fans even to to see you answering the same questions, but yeah, yeah true, that, true. yeah, for sure. For the fans, that, it's definitely boring. That being said, do you think there's a topic or a question that people never think to ask you, and you're like, man, I wish they would ask me more about this, you know? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question, actually. <laughs> You know, I don't know. It I, could be personal, more personal related or band yeah. related. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I love books. They have such a big impact on on uh, growing up. They've been such a big influence. Many books, mm -hmm. school, from school and also books that I read outside of school. But I never get asked too many questions about books that I'm reading or what I've read or if they've had an impact or in anything that I do as far as mm -hmm. writing or lifestyle mm -hmm. or anything like that. But I really? I think it would be great to be asked more questions about that because they do have such a huge significance on absolutely on, on, on ideas and, and envisioning certain ideas. So. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's a very great answer because I totally agree with that. But now you have to tell me a book to read. All right. I've been. All right. I mean, <laughs> a, a friend of mine. He he's a re really close friend of mine that I've known for a long time, and mm -hmm. uh, I was rereading the book. It's called The PMA Effect by John okay. Joseph, and okay. he's also plant based. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's really. Uh, and crazy, uh, an incredible read, you know. It, it, okay, it really, I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah, it was great during lockdown, and, and I know him so well, and just his life is just, he's written two other books as well, 
and uh, they're great, and he's a great storyteller, and I got to see him um, talk about the book live, and, and, you know, it was like, wow, really powerful. So, yes, the Beautiful. PMA Thank effect. Thank you so much. Positive yes. mental attitude. Yes, positive yes. mental attitude. Thank That's you. Right. I yeah. wrote it down because I love, love, love reading. And I can totally, totally agree that the books that we read, the, even the movies that we watch, the Absolutely. people that surround yeah. us, the, the, the nature, everything influence a lyricist or a writer or an artist in general, in a way or another, sometimes subconsciously. But I can totally relate to the fact that certain ideas just touch me or remind me that that's definitely something I want to talk about. That's definitely something I want to write about, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I just, I tend to be like super, um, um, I don't know what's the correct word. I don't want to sound too, um, cocky about it or something, <laughs> but I tend to be a pretty awake person and I pay attention to things that sometimes people just let go like through them and reading helps so much when you focused so in, like every word sometimes i go back and i reread things mm -hmm. and it's it's so awesome thank you for the for the suggestion i'll look that sure. up okay. yes thank you so much for being here we've been talking for an hour i can't believe it's been an hour <laughs> yeah. this was great you are an incredible human being even more now that i got to talk to you but i already knew that you were fantastic so thank you for joining us thank you for oh, thanks for having me thank you for the music you know it's it's <laughs> great it's great to have people like you and um you know the music that you do so Thank you. <laughs> Thank Do you. Seriously. <laughs>